All right, so we're going to be discussing the Stryker Power Pro XT stretcher. What we want to do is go over the button configuration so everybody understands the buttons. So there's uh, two sets of buttons, one on the top rail and one on the bottom rail, so it doesn't matter where your hand position is, you can still function as stretcher with the electric system. So there's two buttons that you're going to be using, either the plus or the minus button. Uh, the minus button literally just brings the carriage up, collapses the wheels. The plus button makes the carriage grow so you can lower the stretcher or bring the stretcher out of the truck and make the stretcher actually uh, go up. We're also going to go over the manual release on the stretcher. So there is a manual handle um, on the back side of the stretcher here. It is noted on that it's on the right side instead of the left side. So manual stretchers have the handles on the left side. The power stretcher has the manual release on the right side. We're also going to talk about the indicator light for the battery. So the indicator light here for the battery, as you can see, is not currently on because the stretcher is in a sleep mode. If you touch any of the buttons, what will happen is it will actually turn the battery power light on so you can check the battery. Uh, a green indicator light tells you that the battery is charged and ready for use. If it turns yellow or is a flashing yellow, it tells you that the battery is losing power, uh, needs to be charged soon, but you can still get some use out of it. If it's red or flashing red, it means the battery is about to die. Change the battery as soon as you can. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're just going to pull the stretch out and show you some of the other functions. All right, so now we're going to discuss loading the stretcher into the vehicle. So I'm going to help Brandon here. What he's going to do is push and hold the plus button until the stretcher stops. It should be at loading height to latch in the vehicle. So we'll just roll it up into the vehicle. Make sure that it actually latches. And I'm going to come down here. We're going to show you how to load it with two people. So you got one on either end. One, two, three. Push and hold the minus button. Make the carriage true. Direct in the air. Uh, we're going to talk about the center mount system that's involved with the Power Striker stretcher. You'll notice it'll be the Striker center mount system. It is the same for both the Power Striker as well as the manual Striker that's a center mount. So any of the trucks that have the center mount Striker system, these stretchers will actually be compatible with. So it doesn't matter if it's a, currently a manual Striker stretcher, uh, the Power Ones will latch into those trucks, which makes it a little bit easier for interoperability. Uh, these str stretchers will also be in our new BLS units as well as our ALS units moving forward with vehicles that we put in service. To unload this, the stretcher, you just got to take some pressure off by pushing in a little bit. You're going to push this red button here. You should hear it release, and then you'll start to pull the stretcher out. So to unload the stretcher, you can unload it with one person or two. So we're going to show you with two. You can put the person on either side. Make sure you lift the bumper so it's out of the way when you go to drop the wheels in the stretcher. All right? So we're going to show you how to unload it with a single person. So as you pull off the stretcher, make sure it comes out past the bumper. And then what you're going to do is push and pull the plus button to make the carriage grow. Set it down, and then you can push and hold the plus button again once it's unlatched to bring it up over the latch. Bring it out of the truck, and then we're going to lower it down to what's called rolling height. So we don't want the patient extended all the way up in the air because then the stretcher becomes very top heavy. You know, the center of gravity is too high, so we want it at what we call rolling height, which is much lower so the patient has less chance of tipping over. All right, so in our transit style vehicles, right in the side sliding door above the counter here is where the spare battery and the battery charger is going to be mounted. Okay, it's actually mounted to the wall, so it's not a free-floating object in the back of the truck. Uh, to simply take the battery off, you're just going to push the red button to release, lift up, and pull straight out. To put a battery on the charger, you're going to just line it up, put it right on here, slide it down, and you should hear it click into place. If it didn't click into place, it is not appropriately on the charger. In our mod-style ambulances, over on the counter next to the CPR chair is where you're going to find the battery charger and the spare battery in the mod. Uh, a couple key features, make sure that it is plugged in, the, the ambulance has to have power, the mod has to be turned on in both style vehicles, and so does the inverter switch. Make sure those things are all on for this to be charging. You'll note that by the glow of the plugs, and you should see the indicator lights on the battery charger. Uh, the green light on the left just shows that it has power, the, battery, the indicator light on the right actually shows the charging status of the battery in the charger. And once again, to uh, release the battery, push the red button, lift up and out, to put one on, slide it share click when it slides down. We're going to show you how to change the battery on the power stretcher. So what you got to do is push the battery release button. So you're going to push this red button in and then the battery will actually slide out on the other side just like that. Put a battery back in the stretcher, you just have to line this up right here and then slide it right in. And then you'll actually see the indicator light in the front of the stretcher turn on. There's an additional feature on the Power Pro XT Striker stretcher. There is actually a steering lock on these wheels. So on the back wheels, you actually have a steering lock. You can activate it with either the red switch back here, same thing with deactivation, or the switch up in the front to lock them or unlock them. When you have them locked, 
and they're in the forward facing position, what you'll notice is that those wheels don't turn anymore, just the front half of the stretcher will swing side to side. And both of those wheels in the front also have the standard locks. You can actually lock all four wheels on the stretcher to prevent it from moving. Always make sure that you maintain contact with the stretcher to keep it from rolling away or tipping over. So with the Striker Power Pro XT, we still have the five print restraint system, with the exception of we now have what's called the X restraint. This is the new shoulder strap system. We're going to step over here and we're going to show you how to actually apply the new restraint system to the patient. So over here, we still have our three leg and uh, hip harness, and then we're going to show you how to do the shoulder straps. The, with this time here with the X restraint system, we're actually going to go across the patient's chest onto the other side. Remember, the seatbelt should always go underneath the patient's arm. At this time, your patient is secured to the new stretcher using the five-point restraint system and using the extra restraints. So with the Striker Power Pro XT, the extra restraint system actually loops in a little different way here. So up on the top here, it's going to loop through this hole onto the top here, unlike the previous stretchers where it looped on here. It has a specific destination for it. With the extra restraint, there is actually a strap that has two ends on it, the male and the female. It's going to loop through right here on this bracket. Your male end is going to go to the female buckle for the hip harness, and the female end is going to go to the male end on the extra strength. With the expandable patient service by Stryker, all of these new stretchers are now technically bariatric capable. In order to use the Stryker XPS system, you're just going to bring the rail up until you hear the first click. And make sure it's locked in place. Now we technically have a bariatric stretcher. However, when we have a patient on, it is important that we always move the XPS system as close to the patient as possible for patient safety. My last thing I want to show you is how to do the manual release. So in the event that the stretcher does die or the battery fails on you, uh, there is a manual release mode for the power striker stretcher, so it is still operational even without power, right? Um, one thing that they do have a fail-safe set in for this stretcher is, is as long as there's weight on the stretcher or it's just sitting by itself, when you do squeeze the manual release trigger, it actually does not release manually. You do have to have somebody on the back end to take the weight off of the back wheels, just like you would a regular uh, manual stretcher. And the purpose is that it's safe to your patients, so you can't just drop them, right? So we want to make sure you have good back safety, straight back, bent knees, you're going to lift up on the back, take pressure off, squeeze the trigger, and then you can lower it down to the appropriate height, let go just like you would any manual stretcher. And then to raise back up, we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to go ahead and he's going to take the weight off, I'm going to squeeze the trigger, and we're going to go up nice and slow. The legs will come down a little slower because they are hydraulic, release the trigger, and then it will settle and latch in place.